All right, we are live. So welcome back to DAP University. So today we got a lot to talk about in our stream. We're going to start off by talking about crypto gaming or Web 3.0 gaming and why this is such an important uh, sector of the crypto space, the Web 3.0 space, blockchain space, whatever you want to call it, uh, to pay attention to. Okay, This is going to be a multi-billion dollar opportunity uh, over the long term. It's already a big opportunity. Okay, So I've seen a lot of news uh, about the uh, Web 3.0 gaming space pop up with the past couple of days. We want to talk about some of that. All right. We're going to look at a lot of the news updates that have happened in the space since our live stream yesterday. Again, we do these live streams Monday through Friday on this channel. Just subscribe, turn on notifications. You'll find out about those whenever we go live. We're going to answer some of your questions, take a quick look at the crypto markets, and a lot more. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to know how to master blockchain step by step, start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So we got people jumping in the chat here. Uh, we got uh, uh, Machiavelli, uh, Charles, technically, um, HD5D Solutions, Automatic Beats, uh, Colorado, Crypto Chick. Uh, we'll see here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. So we got Future Crypto. Oh, I like that. So let's let's go ahead and jump into this. Let's talk about crypto gaming. Okay, because um, you know the entire blockchain Web 3.0 uh, space, whatever you want to call it, right? Sometimes people use these terms, you know, interchangeably with crypto, all that stuff. Is this big trend of adoption that's taking off? Okay, and within that trend, all, all these use cases that are powered by blockchain technology, and within that trend, we have all these smaller trends like decentralized finance or DeFi. We have NFTs. We have gaming. All right, we have metaverse, and some of these things have overlap. All right. But one real distinct category I want to pay attention to today is actually uh, Web 3.0 games, okay? Because this is a uh, a sector that's continuing to gain pretty rapid adoption. And talk about you know what you can do with Web 3.0 games. Uh, we'll kind of poll the audience here if there's any particular Web 3.0 games that they like. Um, let's see here. Sorry, I had a little technical issue on my end. Yeah, I'm going to kind of pull the audience, see maybe what kind of web through one of the games you like. If you have any web through games you really like, go ahead and drop them in the chat. Uh, maybe we'll talk about some of those on our stream today. Um, but let's let's pull up the first uh, kind of item on our sheet here. I'm going to pull up my screen and also uh, my co-host here. So this is going to be uh, Walshy. So if you just tune in into the stream for the first time, uh, you know, a couple of weeks uh, I've brought on my co-host Walshy here to help prep for these streams and also, uh, you know, add, add a lot of value to, to making these for you all. Um, so I'm going to add him to the stream here. So if you have anything you want to talk about in our stream, then definitely hit up. I am Walshy here on, on Twitter. You can, you can ping him and, and, you know, submit any ideas, topics that you want to talk about. So, uh, you know, the first, the first thing is that you, you, when you're talking about trends and, what's taking off you know the the best way to do that is to follow the money all right and we're seeing a bunch of money pour into the crypto gaming space all right so um we have blockchain games attract 1.1 billion dollars in investment in january alone so you want to give us some details on this walshi yeah absolutely jam everybody um this is pretty this is pretty great uh, i'm a big proponent of blockchain gaming in general and just the idea of, about it um, but the TLDR here is that DAP Radar and Blockchain Game Alliance, I'm going to call them BGA from now on, uh, reports that uh, blockchain gaming accounts for 52% of all blockchain activity in January. 52% of all blockchain activity. I just want to say that one more time. That's pretty big. Um, <laughs> pretty big. <laughs> pretty big, indeed. Um, right now it has over a billion dollars in investments just from other funds other vcs you know raises etc uh but i want to provide some statistics to compare them to traditional the traditional gaming space so right now the traditional gaming space um is a 200 billion dollar industry with 2.4 billion monthly active users uh, blockchain gaming again in its extreme infancy like we can barely even walk right now without getting kicked out, <laughs> kicked um blockchain gaming is a 23 billion dollar industry and this is uh stats are provided by coin gecko there um this is huge so right. not only does blockchain gaming account for a, a, a majority of the blockchain uh, activity but obviously money is pouring in, investment is pouring in, ideas are pouring in, creators are pouring into this nascent space. Um, I think that this space in itself 
has seen a lot of pushback from the mainstream, from your typical cyberbullying uh, narratives that are out there about how NFTs are all just about profit, et cetera. Um, I think that we need to pour as a community more, more, it's more of a responsibility on us to make sure we're highlighting the best parts of the space. Um, so that's why I wanted to start off with the amount of activity on the blockchain that gets generated just by gaming. Yeah, totally. So, uh, you know, with that, I think you threw out a stat there. Um, uh, do, do we have a source on the, the total number of a, uh, active users with regular games? He said something like 2.6 billion people. Do we know yeah, how, how we at that number? <laughs> uh, that report right there that you're looking at. Yeah, that's crazy because if that's if that's even close to true, that's over a quarter of the world's population. <laughs> so that, that basically means one in four people on the face of the earth plays a game at least once a month. Basically, that's what that means. So you're talking about the total addressable market of people who could play blockchain games is basically a quarter of people and like all, all there, over a quarter of people. Uh, uh, actually, more like a third. I forget what the world population, somewhere between seven and eight billion, right? So uh, somewhere between a quarter and a third. As a lot of people, I mean, crypto and decentralized finance has a massive total adjustable market because what's you know what's the total adjustable market for people who use money? Basically, everybody, um, more, more or less, right? But now you have an additional layer because uh, not everybody is necessarily going to use an NFT in terms of you know buying uh, you know NFTs to collect, but maybe you have NFTs that represent other real world use cases. But this is another you know this is another st card stacking the deck in in terms of what crypto how, how crypto can basically eat the entire world yeah that's that's absolutely right definitely well said um i'm i'm a huge gamer i uh, grew up building computers first video game console i had was in the late 20th century um was a game gear if anyone remembers that are, are you a gamer you play a lot of video uh, so games uh, not really i mean i i don't play a lot of games um i i used to play some when i was a kid um i i don't spend a lot of time playing games uh but there i, I want to know from the chat here uh what are some blockchain games that you're currently playing uh and we can kind of talk about those because uh, a lot of people want to see how can you use blockchain with gaming i mean one of the easiest kind of low-hanging fruits is basically that you could take uh, you know, existing items from a game and take them out of a game onto a blockchain, right? That's kind of the promise of the metaverse, right? And there's a lot of overlap between metaverse and blockchain games is that, you know, some of these, some of these games will be played inside of a metaverse uh, more or less. And then you could exit that metaverse and you're still, you know, you have your assets from the game or something like that. So let, let, let's see the chat here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, you definitely see that use case thrown around a lot. I think um, one that isn't really... Um, recognized by the mainstream or, or like the, the narratives at the moment is like the investment fundraising vehicle that nfts allow indie developers um right because all I see nfts utilized within games and i do too and you know that's the normal kind of like go-to like use case but in, in the reality is is that like for indie developers a lot are just underfunded and may not have any kind of funding in order to you know pursue their dreams to develop games and nfts enable that vehicle enable that method to raise funds to allow them to develop games right and, and obviously i don't see a lot of like reporting on this at all throughout the market and you know i'm kind of it makes me mad it makes me mad especially because again nfts in video games have this connotation that it's just gonna be the worst thing in the world and it's all about you know financializing video games etc and, and it's not the case it, it really isn't um i'll have to talk about that for a couple seconds but your, what are your thoughts yeah well um yeah, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, especially talking about NFTs as a fundraising vehicle, because one one big aspect of the crypto gaming space um, is that there's a pretty big barrier of entry to 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 create like an immersive, like addicting video game. Um, you know, basically, like if you want to create, like if you got into crypto during the DeFi gold rush, or like right now is still probably what a lot of people consider part of the NFT gold rush. Um, like launching a new DeFi product or launching a new NFT is not that hard on the grand scheme of things. I mean, it's not just like, you know, it's not just easy as in like, you know, a monkey could do it, but compared to making an immersive video game, like it's really hard. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really hard. Um, because you have all these, like essentially, uh, uh, getting all the graphics, right. Getting all the user experience, right. Of like, how does this feel? There's so much like this, this is a visceral aspect, uh, to video games that you don't get from just like, uh, 
you know, clicking a button and yield farming or swapping tokens, right? Or just clicking mint on an NFT website. Um, you know what I mean? And it's it's a lot it's a lot easier to fork existing applications in all these old worlds than it is a video game because you know most most video game forks aren't going to be quite as satisfying as like why why would you play a fork unless it was just free? Right. For DeFi, you would get a fork because that new thing could be worth money. Right. And that the old thing's not or the NF, the new NFT that got forked might be worth money. If the old one isn't and has new upside potential. But with games, you don't have that appeal quite as much. So that the fundraising vehicle for indie developers is a huge part of this because it means now you have something that can fuel uh it gives you fuel towards creating that competitive product that's otherwise really hard to do with no budget. Yeah, one thousand percent. On top of that, it allows them to establish their brand before the game's even released. It allows them to build community before the game's well before it's released. It allows them to not take VC funds, not have to go through the ordeal of fundraising. Um, all thanks to the thanks to NFTs. You know, that's that's huge. It's huge. And that's just one small portion of the conversation that doesn't get talked about when we're talking about gaming and NFTs is powering indie developers to raise funds on their own to support developing new games. I, I definitely agree with you a thousand percent. I know there that have sick graphics that have these beautifully created gaming engines that aren't being released whatsoever. And that's out of the public eye. They have like YouTubes, but they're not putting any kind of major content out they're the key they're the missing link as soon as we can find games that are fun that incorporate nfts again keyword fun that incorporate nfts it's going to be a game changer no pun intended yeah i um, i'll give another example so um during um you know 2020 COVID, blah 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 um, i was building a startup um with like doesn't matter in industry but while i was building a startup wow classic came out and so i was a huge world of warcraft fan um, and player back in the day I went hardcore and stuff this time around i actually created a guild had 100 people in it we had two 40-man teams we cleared knacks etc and I, I i led that guild the entire time um you know i didn't get any reimbursement i didn't want any reimbursement right you always hear the story of like people learning how to nft using the world of warcraft auction house but we also see the example of first Play to, play to earn gaming occurring in World of Warcraft 15 plus years ago when there'd be um, gold farmers farming up gold to sell. Now, right. that example is a boring example of someone grinding away just to make some money, right? But the point that I'm making here is that, that was play to earn back then. We haven't seen a play to earn model that's fun, that right. actually is engaging. And once we do... I like I saw this hit piece a couple days ago um, from a YouTuber I'm not going to talk about that just absolutely just knocked down NFT gaming because it's the worst thing in the world and financialization, etc. Controlling your own data is huge. And being able to give people money and value for their time is also huge. Because I know, and I'm not even including myself in this, I know people have spent thousands of hours playing a video game and they don't get anything for it except for the excitement and the fun, right? Why not have a like a perfect blend of both yeah right? that's I, that's like the end game for me i hope yeah and you know like there, there's there's all kinds of potential in terms of like owning your own data all this type of stuff the easiest low-hanging fruit is just being able to have some sort of financial uh uh scorecard um that you own from playing the game and then that you can that you completely own it. you can take it out of the game and then it can go be redeemed somewhere else on an open marketplace that's the easiest low-hanging fruit for for play to earn um and so yeah there, there's a lot of stuff that's already existed in traditional games but that's the kind of promise of crypto and blockchain is that it, it has that open permissionless aspect to it we can take it out you know it's like one of the big reasons that um if, if you go look at like vitalik's um uh, website right like he even talks on there about uh, one of his original reasons that he created Ethereum in the first place or had the idea is because he played, uh, I think it was WoW, right? And then basically spent all this time creating, a, getting a certain, uh, I think it was like a, a sword inside of WoW. And then it got taken away from him by the centralized creators of the game. And he was like, what, what is this, right? So um, yeah, that's a big promise of blockchain games for sure.
So we got Axie Infinity pull up here. This is some, someone somebody mentioned in the chat as one that they uh, particularly like to play. So definitely an OG in the play to earn model. I remember when Axie Infinity first came out way before it got a ton of attention. Uh, it's come a long way. It's absolutely crazy. One thing that a lot of people don't give Axie Infinity credit for um, is the amount of people that sustained that that acquired sustained income throughout COVID due to Axie Infinity, especially in countries like Indonesia and other third world countries. And mm -hmm. I don't, I can't like stress how important that is to allow people to sustain livable income from playing an Axie. It, it, it's a fun game. It's rather simplistic, but having people being able to support themselves by playing something that they're having fun doing is something we have really never seen before in gaming outside of YouTubers and streamers. And I think that's why you see a lot of the backlash from like YouTubers and streamers, because they're the ones that are really profiting off of video games right now. And what NFTs do is it introduces the, like, the idea that everyone can. And so you're going to see, obviously, some backlash from these these YouTubers, these Twitch streamers that are against NFT gaming because it takes away from their profits, right? It, that's just, it sucks, but that's that's just what it is. Um, but like, yeah. and again, they 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 go to the environmental argument. It's terrible for the environment. If you know anything about blockchain, guys, right? ETH is going through the merge soon, moving over to proof of stake, ninety nine point like five or ninety nine point nine percent reduction in, in 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 you know environmental damage and environmental output. Um, so that argument doesn't hold up, right? And then they always downplay the fact that like, oh, it's only about financialization. How about the people that survived COVID by playing Axie Infinity? What about those people? Talk about right. those people. Yeah, it's it's anytime that you anytime that you want to uh, smear something that has money involved, you can just like chalk it up to greed, right? People will always just use that term greed and you know paint a paint with a black brush anything they don't like that has money associated with it. When there's lots of reasons why people would pursue money other than just like like gross like dog you know no uh like dog eat dog greed right there's there's so many other reasons like opportunity like pr providing opportunity uh for yourself and others like maybe your family or something like that right there's there's all kinds of reasons why people would want to do it uh that is there are good reasons other than just like i want and it's it's always like zero sum thinking right people think that I have to win and you have to lose. And that's the only way that money can get created. Well, it fails to understand basic economics in the first place and actually positive some games. Uh, so yeah, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. Yeah. yeah, you see this. Yeah, you yeah. see this. Basically, you see the news all the time. People talk about housing prices, like housing prices are due to greed, and all this type of stuff. But it's like you don't understand price coordinated economies. So um, it's the same thing with. It's the same thing with um blockchain it's all that journalist bs that reveals just insane ignorance um Absolutely. so let's pull this up on the screen here uh let's pull this up on the screen here so nintendo refuses to enter the metaverse so what's what's the deal here washi um so it's a it, it looks bad but it's not <laughs> <laughs> so nintendo has um said obviously they they refuse to enter the the metaverse they're, they're just not impressed with um all the metaverse developments they really don't see anything that like stands out from a consumer perspective that would like really make their audience like go crazy or just like start investing their money and, and you know be passionate about what's there here's um some specific quotes from shintaro uh, furukawa uh, who's nintendo's president um, there is no this is a quote there, there's no easy way to quantify exactly what shocks and enjoyment the metaverse can bring our users that's a negative statement right here comes a positive one Quote, the metaverse has attracted the attention of many companies around the world and has immense promise. So again, it sounds like they've refused to enter the metaverse. That's just a headline, right? Right now, they just don't see anything that draws them in. And, right, and like I was just referring to, the, the mainstream popular narrative of NFTs are the worst thing in the world is obviously what these companies are looking at. I mean... Look at look at what happened with the creator of Worms, Team Seventeen. Look at what happened with Ubisoft. Look at what happened with um, the guys who did um, the soccer games, right? Like as soon as they announce anything NFT related, boom! It's just instant, immediate, like visceral backlash from like the people that wouldn't spend two seconds to learn about a blockchain. 
Yeah, totally. So basically, there's a couple of things you have to think about here. Number one, like, yeah, de definitely you got to read it. You have to be literate with the headline, right? You can read through the weep between the lines here and understand what it's actually saying. But one important thing here is that Nintendo is actually looking into the metaverse. So you can't, can't be ignored, right? Now, what they're saying here is they don't see a natural fit for Nintendo to jump on this trend. So there's a couple of things here. Number one, you know, we don't exactly know what the metaverse is going to look like in its final form. I keep saying that on this channel, but I want to repeat it uh, because that's how new technology always is. I, this is this is a lot like how uh, smart contracts felt in like 2017, where we knew we had like ICOs, right? We knew we could create tokens and we knew there's a lot of potential beyond it, but we didn't exactly know what was going to stick and what was going to work, what was going to retain users. Uh, we were just kind of building the way, trying things. DeFi was an idea inside a lot of people's heads. It had not really come to fruition yet. Um, and that's a lot like what the metaverse feels like right now. We've got virtual worlds, we've got virtual lands, and a lot of people are just going to get in that and say, okay, cool, but what am I going to do with that? It's kind of the same thing with that we have with ICOs and beyond that. There's a lot of money to be made, there's a lot of, a lot of fundraising to be had off of a, a, a kind of a hype train, uh, but there's a lot more beyond that. But we don't know what it's like yet, right, for the metaverse. So that that's one thing to understand. And so so for Nintendo, no, Nintendo can't get into something and take a massive risk that would be that Nintendo has a lot to lose. I'll put it that way. Nintendo's already one of the richest, you know, companies on the face of the planet, especially in terms of like gaming, right? I mean, I don't have all the stats in front of me, but just generally speaking, like they're they're a massive company. So they're not gonna be able to just, you know, risk something major on uh something that's not gonna work out that would be that impact them uh, negatively. Okay. This goes back to the whole idea of like the uh, the innovators dilemma. Okay, uh, it's a pretty good book if you want to check this out. But the quick summary is that basically, you know, large incumbent companies uh, lose market share or can lose market share uh, by listening to their customers and providing what they appear the highest value products, and then new companies that serve low value customers with poorly developed technology can improve the technology incrementally until it's good enough to quickly. Uh, and take market share from the established businesses. And so that's a lot like what's happening in blockchain. It's, it's harder for some of these big companies to come in and crack this nut and, and solve the big use cases. And much smaller companies, by comparison, can come in, get it right, go through all the pain, and uh, you know make all the mistakes, but then find those enduring set of use cases that take off, and then they go on to steal market share from the big guys. Exactly right. Exactly right. And the, the funny thing is, is that when you when you hear about like the arguments against NFT gaming, the one thing that uh these you know these people they, they typically like to, to espouse is that you know I haven't seen anything successful yet. I haven't seen anything that'll change my mind. Well, I mean, you're not gonna see anything if the second someone announces like anything, you immediately just berate them and knock them down and 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 you know kick them in the shins and try to just disparage the name and disparage the idea of like what they're doing. But that happens for everything. I mean, look at the the, the team 17 example. That's the creator of worms, right? They they just release I don't know if the NFTs were gonna be incorporated into the game at all, but like they wanted to release like a worms. 10,000, uh, you know, edition, I don't know if they're profile pictures, but just 10,000 worms as NFTs to have people collect them and, and trade them and stuff. But as soon as they announce that, just boom, backlash, boom, backlash, boom, backlash. And just like give someone a shot, give a company a real shot and see what happens. Let them innovate. But right now, innovation is getting stifled again by just the, the very vocal minority of people that are against this. Um, I don't know if you guys knew this. Um, Take Two, who's the grant, who's the creator of Grand Theft Auto, um, is highly convinced of NFTs and blockchain gaming. Here's a quote from Take Two CEO. His name's Strauss Zelnick. He said, "We're highly convinced there's an opportunity for NFTs to fit with Take Two's offering in the offerings in the future. We believe in rare goods. We believe in collectibles. The only concern we have is that there's speculation going on." Right. So in other words, as soon as we can find a use case that's not speculative, boom, game's over. Right. There's a lot that's of hype totally. in the industry. There's a lot of hype from companies that really do want to incorporate this. We have a very it's a narrative, guys. It's a mainstream narrative going against going against the grain right now. 
Um, and so we want to just work with whatever we can to like dispel that and try to like provide like real examples of like NFT gaming that could be, you know, positive. Yeah, totally. Okay, so let's jump into some uh, questions here in the chat. Um, and then I got to roll off for today. Let's see here. I saw one. Re- I know there's like so much chatter today. It's awesome. I love it. And someone really early on said that they introduced their 12 year old to your program and they learned the 12 year old learned how to, how to code using DAP university. So I just wanted to plug nice. that person and say, thanks for sharing yeah. that comment. And that's one of those heartwarming stories that we absolutely love. Yeah, totally. That's awesome. Congratulations. Um, let's see too much video gaming bad for the neck and eyes, <laughs> bad influence for kids. Yeah. I mean, it's, they they have their place that's for sure someone says gala games is cool yeah they're, they're pretty good i love i love their uh, their their vision they've uh, are going to invest 5 billion this year to blockchain gaming um so that's money hopefully very well spent thoughts on jp morgan building a lounge in decentraland uh for you weigh in i heard about this everyone's reporting on this cool that's my take yeah, I haven't I haven't heard about it. This is the first time I'm hearing about it. We all know JP Morgan. Um, Jamie Dimon was very adamant against blockchain, crypto, etc. So um, they announced today, Gregory, that yeah, that they're gonna build a lounge in the Central Land. But like to me, it's just like okay, cool. And they they might do business in the Central Land. So it's the biggest like flip, I guess, from from going from like no to, to yes. Now we have something in the Central Land, but like. It's still JP Morgan. You can't get me too excited about them. Um, Walsh, what is your favorite blockchain game? Uh, I, I don't want to endorse anything right now because then it'll just get spammed. It'll look like I'm like, uh, you know, again, endorsing them and, you know, promoting for them. I'm not pro- like, I don't have, no one's paying me money to say anything. I'd look at, if I was going to say one, look at Chumby Valley. It's free to play. It's free to start. And that's a model that I think needs to be adapted across the entire ecosphere. Free to start, play to play to earn. All right, let's do a couple more questions here that I want to roll off. Um, let's see here. Do you want to, um, what about the documentary? Uh, which one? Um, so Netflix is um, oh, has announced right, right, right. that they're gonna they're gonna turn the Bitfinex uh, controversy into a yeah. documentary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll talk about that real quick, and then we'll do like one last uh, quick fact here. So yeah, the the, the Bitcoin hack we were talking about before 2016 Bitcoin hack, the funds you know uh, were recovered. We have uh, we have some people in I believe still in custody, or maybe they're on bail. I can't remember. Um, who are associated with that? Definitely go check the live stream we talked about last week. Uh, Netflix is making a movie about it and or documentary. And we do have some, a fun fact for uh, the ETH blockchain. So the gas trend uh, has gone significantly down. So gas prices are um, at a at a low. So if you got any on chain activity you need to do on ETH, now is the time to do it. All right, everybody. So that's all I got for today. You know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube background and subscribe to this channel. If you got anything that you want to talk about on our streams, definitely go ping I am Walshy on Twitter. You can see his Twitter handle right there next to that mute button. Um, you know, if you're as fast as the technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or, hey, maybe you'll take a master's shortcut entirely, I can should become a blockchain master step-by-step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.